to summarize this car, I think this is uh, an Atlas replacement for people who don't really need the third row seat and who don't have particularly tall friends to sit in the back. Welcome everybody. This week we are going to see the Atlas Cross Sport. Now this is a new take on a platform that VW has been very successful with and a lot of you really love and enjoy. So. The cross sport is slightly different and we are going to explore it here on Car Reels. My name is Henry and I hope you enjoyed this video. So the cross sport, we have chosen an R model. Now this is the top of the line model with 21 inch rims. It's got a very nice front fascia. It's got a nice little diffuser in the back and it's basically the best version of this car you can get. It's fully loaded with technology inside and I think it looks really, really sharp. Now, the reasons why you choose a cross sport over the regular Atlas is because you simply don't need the third row seat and you want a little bit more space inside. Now, this car is about three inches shorter, but the wheelbase is the same. Also, the roof line is very, very nicely sloped and I really, really like that. Now, everything else about the car is VW. If you follow me through the back, you have the V6 option, which this car has, makes 276 horsepower and 266 foot-pounds of torque. And it's got four motion all-wheel drive, which is incredible. It has a towing package. This car is not exactly the most capable car with when it comes to towing, but it can tow, and obviously it's equipped with a towing package. Pirelli Scorpion tires, all season tires, they kind of ride a little rough and the car handles good, but you definitely feel the bumps a little bit in this vehicle. If you follow me inside, this is really where the biggest difference is. In the Cross Sport, you have an incredible amount of space in the back seat, and that's because you now don't need that space given to the rear seats. Headroom is a little tight, especially in in the back because the roof is sloped. 5'11", I have probably about an extra couple of inches. So if you are over 6'1", you are going to have a little bit of trouble uh, with, uh, with space uh, when it comes to headroom. Not really a big deal. Uh, it's the very first SUV that I've sat in the middle and I actually, I actually enjoyed. There's a little bit of a soft leather here and it feels like an actual seat. And because this panoramic sunroof is so large, my headroom, it feels endless. The trunk. Simply put, it's massive. And that leads me to five things I like about the Atlas Crossport. So the first thing I really like about the Crossport is space. This car is incredibly spacious and it feels like you have room to breathe inside and you really, really, really get a sense of what a full SUV would be like if you did not need the third row seating. Number two, it's this massive sunroof. It's truly massive and it has only a tiny little spot in the middle. It's basically almost unimpeded. Number three, four motion all wheel drive. This car has excellent all wheel drive. Right Number four is the technology in this car. This car is loaded with tech and I really do enjoy the 10 inch screen in the center console and the eight inch screen in front of me. It gives me a very clear readout of the map and it gives me basically all the information I would want out of the car. And it's got a lot of features such as lane assist. It has a feature where it finds uh, the, the parallel parks for you. The cameras in this car are excellent. It has a 3D camera. It has a lot of features where you can sort of change what, what's around you. I feel like the Fender sound system was a nice touch. It sounds really good. I know I'm not a true enthusiast of sound systems and I've said this in previous videos, but it has really good bass and it really plays my music really, really nicely. And that's really all I want out of a car. I don't want it to creak. It doesn't do anything weird. It doesn't have any low bass. It doesn't have uh, sharp, sharp noises. It's very clear. And I'm really happy to see Fender in a car like the Atlas Cross Sport. And really at the end of the day, this is an excellently equipped car. The fifth thing I like about this car is how it looks. Now, I know you need to get it in a higher trim in order for it to start looking like this, but 
this R-line trim is actually really, really sharp looking. I really love the rims. I love the front face that it's got going. I love the sloping roof line. I know it's a little lacking when it comes to headroom, but I just, I just love how it looks. So there's something that invokes a special emotion. And at the end of the day, a car like this to achieve an emotional feeling in the way it looks, I think it's quite a big deal. Now, five things I dislike about it. This V6 badge. It's the highest trim engine you can have and simply put, it's just not, it's just not good enough. The two liter turbo in this car is even worse. That basically is hard to move after 100 kilometers per hour. So you sort of need the V6 in order to get going anywhere, especially if you're trying to tow anything. Now, I know nowadays, a big powerful engine is not necessary, but a car that weighs 4,000 pounds needs a bigger engine. It needs maybe a V6 with some turbos, and it's not like Audi doesn't have any engines to choose from, or VW, or anybody in this group. They make so many different engines that I felt like they could have chosen an engine that was a little bit more modern, with a little bit more torque, to maybe give this car a little bit of a better towing capacity. The second thing I dislike about this car is the fuel mileage. Now, it's not bad, but it's definitely not leading in, in, in its category. And that's because, again, it's tied to the engine that they've chosen to put in this car. The V6 moves about well on the highway. And with that being said, it just, it doesn't give you the trade-off where it's a sporty engine and therefore the fuel mileage has been sacrificed. This engine doesn't necessarily have a strong personality and yet, it doesn't give the best fuel mileage. Number three, it's the headroom. If you really need headroom and your passengers are taller than 6'1 or 6'2, it might just be a little bit of a problem. Number four, it's the interior material choice. It's got a lot of rough plastics mixed with some soft materials up top and oftentimes is what looks like a soft material because it's used on the dash as a soft material in the rear is good old-fashioned plastic and it feels not as premium as i'd like it to feel the fifth point is this car drives sporty but with that being said it is a little bit a little bit bumpy and You've got to be aware of that because if you choose this car on the basis that it's going to be a super smooth family vehicle, you might be surprised at how well it handles, but it sacrifices the ride just a little bit. So I've driven this car a little bit and now let's go for a short drive just to tell you guys what this is all about. Right off the bat, the steering wheel is excellent. It's absolutely crucial to any vehicle to have a great steering wheel. It is the first point of contact. And I think it's, it's a good job via VW when it comes to the steering wheel. Another thing that I really love is cooled seats. A must have features for days like this where it's incredibly hot. Maybe we should turn the of course, we've chosen rush hour traffic to go for this little drive. And let's just wait. I get a really good sense of, oof, yeah, bumpy. It's, it's bumpy, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I've pulled in into a cul-de-sac. I swear this was a planned, planned route. I just missed a turn by a whole street, I think. Good thing I have a GPS in front of my face is, basically the entire dash but paying attention to traffic you know let's go easier on these bumps this car feels really really well pointed and what i mean by that is that the steering wheel gives me a very good sense of direction the moment it turns the body and the nose follow through very nicely um, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel very lazy maybe i've been a little bit harsh on the engine um, 276 horsepower is not a whole lot of horsepower, but it does get the car moving more than you would think. To summarize this car, I think this is uh, 
an Atlas replacement for people who don't really need the third row seat and who don't have particularly tall friends to sit in the back. But it feels sporty, it's nimble, it's got a good sense of it's a good sense of feel with the road, with get, with a trade-off being that is a little bit it's a little bit bumpy, uh, but not enough to ruin the ride in any way. It just it doesn't have it doesn't have a a, a a harsh ride it just has a very compliant ride and that you feel that when you turn the car it stays relatively flat so it, it's expected to be a bit bumpy the cabin is very spacious i really enjoy the seating position i enjoy basically looking out of this there's a lot of space good visibility it's just a really really nice car to drive every day and i think VW has done a great job at not ruining the Atlas with the Cross Sport. They've just simply given it a little bit of a kick, a little bit of a personality. This is an SUV where you get out and you might actually turn around and look and say, wow, I really enjoy the lines of this, uh, of this particular vehicle. And I think you can't ask for more than that from VW. And here you go, a different take on the Atlas, the Cross Sport. So we've reached the point of the video where you might ask yourself what is the difference between the cross sport and the actual atlas well we have an atlas r here and i will tell you the front the same the weight about a hundred and change pounds but the biggest difference the seat if i sit in the back here headspace well there's about a foot i think maybe not quite a foot but there is a lot more headspace here the legroom feels roughly about the same, maybe a little bit less, but not enough to make a big difference. Not enough to make as big of a difference as the headroom does. Now, on top of that, a cool feature of this is if you have a baby seat in the back, in this car, you don't actually have to remove the baby seat because the seat does one of these where you can still have your baby seat attached to the, to the second row and then you go into the third row. Well, that's really, this is the seat that you're looking for if you really want an Atlas versus the Cross Sport. And if you don't need this, I think the Cross Sport is the choice for you. Have a good day. See ya guys. Please don't forget to comment and subscribe. It helps us out a lot. And we will see you on the next episode. Have a good day.